I hated fifth grade. And it was all because of a hat. Now, don't get me wrong, I loved the hat. Shortly after my parents split up, my dad got me this awesome Cubs hat from Wrigley Field, and it immediately became one of my favorite possessions. But my teacher had a no hats policy in school, a strict no hats policy, because she said that wearing a hat indoors was disrespectful. Now, I didn't understand that at all. I was defiant. She confiscated the hat. I broke back into school and stole it back. I wore it the next day. Words were said, uh, mistakes were made, and I spent the rest of my year hating fifth grade, and it was all because of a hat. Something went wrong. A little thing like that shouldn't ruin a year of school. Now, I know I'm partly to blame. Kids really shouldn't break into school and steal stuff. However, as a teacher, I want to know how to avoid situations like that. So the question today is, how can I create effective rules and routines to improve classroom management? We're the adults in the room. We set the tone. What's the best tone to set? I've taught for 15 years. I've studied a lot on the subject. Most importantly, I've talked with a lot of teachers, and I've come to one big conclusion. Effective rules and routines come from just two things, care and consistency. That's it. If you take nothing else away from this video, I want to get those two principles, care and consistency. This works. It's the same basic idea behind uh, teaching with love and logic. It's the same idea that teachers with incredible classroom management used. I've seen it myself. This stuff just works. What does this look like? Well, in a broad way, care looks like communicating, showing respect and empathy. That's the foundation of all caring communities, so let's make it the foundation of ours. And care looks like sharing control. You need to have control of your classroom, but in order to gain real control, you need to be able to share it. On the other hand, consistency looks like being flexible. This might seem contradictory, but we'll explore how rigid, extensive lists of rules actually back you into corners and force you to be inconsistent. Also, consistency looks like sticking to your guns in a really specific, care-filled strategy. And finally, consistency looks like powering up your routines. The things that you're going to do all the time, well, you've got to make sure that they engage your students, both their brains and their emotions. Are you ready to see what that looks like in your classroom? Let's dive in. Let's look at some really specific strategies. You might be doing some already, uh, but I hope that others are things that you can steal or things that get your imagination, get your creative juices flowing and help you come up with things that you can use with your students in your classroom. Let's start with communicating respect. Let's say, just for instance, that you had this fifth grader in your class who really loved his handsome hat, but you've got this school-wide no hats policy. You could say, hey, you know the rule about hats in class, take that thing off or give it to me. Or you could say, oh, that hat looks awesome. However, we've sadly decided to discriminate against hats at this school. Now, we'll have to take it off right now, but if you want to write a letter to the principal and see if you can get the rule changed, I'll be happy to help you edit it. You want students to listen? Then get on their team, and anger never does that. So when students misbehave or, or violate a policy, start with, oh, and then you can follow that up with, that's a bummer, or how disappointing. We don't shield students from consequences, but we do make them feel that care. If you get in the same boat as your students, they will be infinitely more likely to row with you. What about shared control? Well, shared control looks like providing choices. As a teacher, you set the broad parameters for your class, but within those parameters, be intentional about giving them space, giving them freedom, and communicate that before you start having to rein them in. For example, try a strategy called skip one. On a quiz, make one more question than you really need. 
and then let students decide which one they want to skip. As long as you have more than one question on each topic, you'll have plenty of information to assess mastery, and you'll let students feel that freedom, feel that trust that you have in them. Are you doing group work? Well, let them choose their partners as long as those choices don't create any problems. Autonomy is a basic human need. When we give students freedom in our class, we show that we trust them. So, we show care by showing respect and sharing control. Now, let's look at some specific ways to be consistent. First, keep your rules few and flexible. No more than five. By making your rules more expansive to cover different circumstances, you'll be able to apply them to more circumstances without breaking the rule. For example, consider a rule like show up on time with a pencil and a folder. That's good, that's important, but a better rule is do your best. Say for instance, a student uh, had a car breakdown on the way into school. Now, in order to be a reasonable human being, to uh, have show some empathy, you'd have to break that first rule. But the student is still doing their best. They're still following that broader and more flexible rule. Broader and more flexible rules can be followed more consistently. Another great rule is be kind. If I create lots of specific rules like this, I'll, students who are boundary pushers will immediately realize that saying someone is stupid is technically permissible. So is throwing pencils at people. Making flexible rules allows you to prevent your class from becoming a factory for little lawyers. And it allows you to be a fair and consistent leader. Once you've got your rules in place, you've got to stick to your guns. Never argue. Here's how. Say that you believe it's time to start math class, but there's a student who thinks it would be a far superior decision just to linger in the hall. Now, you have an airtight argument supported by things like the hands of the clock and the schedule on the wall. If you got in an argument, you would totally win. But ain't nobody got time for that. You could just demand that they get in their seat and threaten a consequence, and that might be an okay solution. However, there's a simpler and more caring strategy. It's called, but what did I say? If a student starts to argue, just listen, nod, and then say, but what did I say? If they continue to argue, repeat, but what did I say? If you do this in a caring fashion, it works wonders. Finally, power up your routines. Those things that you're gonna do over and over and over again, well, if each one has just a little bit of brain-boosting power, that really adds up. And if you can add just a little twist, well, it makes your kids want to follow those routines and it keeps you sane. Make your routines more educational with brain-gauging transitions. Those things that you're gonna do all the time, figure out how to keep your students tied to academic content. For example, if you're walking down the hall, ask students to estimate the number of steps that it might take them to get there, or what number they'll get to if they count their steps by five. Incorporating just a little bit of education into your everyday routines makes your class that much smarter. Next, power up your routines with Blue Apple transitions. Blue Apple is all about being the teacher who stands out, so take an ordinary routine and add your own extraordinary brand of fun to it. For example, instead of clapping your hands to get student attention, make a horn of silence. Take an old roll of wrapping paper and blow on it to let students know it's time to begin class. My mom taught for, well, she taught for a long time. Hi, mom. And she used a singing, dancing, stuffed animal in order to help her students work through transitions. Every year we got her something new and she would challenge her students, hey, can we get this room clean in three cycles of a singing, dancing gopher singing I'm All Right from Caddyshack? Those are just a couple examples of what care and consistency look like in the classroom. I hope they get your creative juices flowing and you can come up with a lot more examples of things that will work for you and your students. If you thought this video was valuable, I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. Check out our download and get some of those strategies and try them in your own class. Let us know what you think. And most importantly, keep being a Blue Apple teacher. There's nothing routine about it. You rule.